Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition and our Let's Play series playing against XTRG. Uh, we are playing as the Allies and XTRG is playing as the Japanese. In our last episode, we had a major battle that was fought near Lo Yang in the north, and our troops successfully threw back a large Japanese offensive. This is a battle that included more than 200,000 combatants on both sides, and it ended up going reasonably well for us. Ooh, Japanese just missed a large troop transport in the Empress Australia, so that's good. Um, that battle was successful, and we had another follow-on battle just to the west of Lo Yang as well, where our troops drove back an armored column of Japanese uh, armored cars, which was very important because that group had been blocking our uh, Lo Yang forces line of retreat, uh, and our troops are continuing the retreat to the west out of Lo Yang because the, despite the fact that we held the town, the fortifications were damaged to the extent that a follow-on attack, once the Japanese have some time to rest and recover, will almost assuredly succeed. And if you fight and lose a battle, your army suffers much greater damage. I mean, this is kind of obvious, but um, much greater damage than if you fight and don't lose a battle. Uh, and so, you know, you, you take a disproportionate number of casualties anytime you have to retreat. Um, meanwhile, we're moving some cruisers along the northern coast, or on the eastern coast of Australia, and we detected the Japanese aircraft carriers uh, moving west uh, from south of New Caledonia toward the uh, Australian coast. So these are all things that we have to keep an eye on. This has been a pretty quiet turn so far. No real submarine activity, just the missed attack on the troop transport. Uh, and then uh, that was about it for subs. Uh, we can see the Japanese are doing some air actions. They're sweeping over Johar Baru, 62 Japanese zeros sweeping over there. Uh, but overall, not a ton going on this turn so far. Japanese continue to bomb Chinese forces that are cut off at Wang Kao. Uh, so that's something we have to be aware of. Uh, Japanese uh, dive bombers are attacking our troops to the west of Lo Yang. Uh, and uh, we actually have a couple of flying tigers that are up here. Uh, that are intercepting this force heavily outnumbered 40 bombers versus 30 fighters uh, but the the flying tigers are doing their best and wow actually they destroyed whoa that's four japanese dive bombers destroyed here um another one damaged uh so it looks like uh, they at least did some damage to these japanese another one down nice so the japanese have now lost more than 10 percent of this force of dive bombers and presumably uh, some morale hit. There's some damage there as well. So hopefully that makes them less effective. Wow, a 6-1 shot down uh, and a bunch more damage. So three, I mean, granted, they're dive bombers, so they're kind of sitting ducks to fighters. But still, that's a pretty good result. Six shot down out of a fleet of, or flight of 40 without loss on our own end, as well as some additional aircraft that are damaged. Uh, presumably some Japanese pilots killed there. No Japanese were escorting. The post-battle action only claims four destroyed, three damage. That's still seven aircraft knocked out. We did lose 75 casualties, but nothing destroyed, just some disabled stuff. Okay, uh, more Japanese bombings in Wang Kao. China seems to be the real focus this turn as another raid's moving in on Wang Kao. Uh, not doing any noticeable damage there. Meanwhile, another flight of 38 zeros and 16 sallies bombing uh, Johar Baru. So that means they had 100 zeros sweeping this turn over Johar Baru and 16 bombers bombing. Uh, we're really benefiting at this stage from the fact that we devastated his sally force. I'm sure he's gone a long way to repairing his losses, uh, but nonetheless, the loss of almost 100 aircraft, presumably 100 pilots as well, uh, has really hindered his ability to effectively assert his air power over the Malayan Peninsula. Or sorry, the Malaya Peninsula. No, no, it's the Malay Pen Peninsula, isn't it? Um, in any event. Um, so some more bombing going on there. Another raid of Sonia's here in the north. This one's only nine, but we only have one interceptor here. Uh, so looks like that guy got a kill for himself too. Um, his aircraft is damaged, closing range, destroying another, wow. So two out of nine, that's uh, more than 20% of this raid uh, was destroyed. Uh, and then some post-battle action. Uh, post-battle action only claims one kill, I guess. Nonetheless, uh, one kill for one plane intercepting, not bad. We've got some Blenheims that are bombing over Bangkok. Uh, so we've got nine bombers and 10 escorts, uh, Blenheim fighter escorts. Uh, we're going for the refinery there. It looks like we got three hits, only a nuisance damage, but anything we can do to kind of slow down his oil production is as destroying the refinery will do. Um, some recon over the Philippines. 
more over Palawain. I think we also had a, a cargo ship arrive at Bataan, uh, and I think that probably unloaded about 1,700 supply uh, to the troops that are cut off in Bataan, so that would be nice. Another raid of nine Sonyas here going in. Um, more, or one more H81A3 intercepting. Um, runs out of ammo, so I think it damaged an aircraft, didn't destroy anything. Uh, severe storms over the target, though. They did destroy one infantry squad. Uh, troop transport, or cargo ship near Palmyra sinks, and that's it for the air phase. So actually quite a bit of air activity that turn uh, over China and over Malaya, uh, but that's about it. Uh, meanwhile, some submarine actions going on with aircraft kind of spotting some submarines and attacking them. Uh, PM airstrikes are going in now. Um, that means the Japanese did have 100 zeros over Singapore, by, or over Johor, or Johor Bahru, by the way. So they have overwhelming air power, uh, at least from a fighter perspective, that they can bring to bear against Singapore. You know, even if we raise our, our whole force there, we have no real feasible way of doing much against them. We'd be outnumbered and in inferior aircraft with in inferior pilots. So uh, perhaps avoiding that whole situation altogether is, is best. Meanwhile, we're also trying to pull out of Mersing, uh, if you remember. We're trying to pull that force back uh, and uh, back toward uh, Singapore or Johor Bahru. Okay, some task forces are looking at fuel. I think this is going to be a pretty quick turn. Japanese shock attack up here in the northern tip of the Malayan Peninsula. We had one base force that retreated west along a rail line, which is actually good because if the Japanese are, uh, you know, trying to move south, it at least delayed them for a day as they kind of had to deal with these guys. Um, they did already take some of these bases here in Kuala Lumpur and Malacca, uh, but it looks like a large number of their troops are still to the north. You can see here they had quite a few regiments attacking here. Uh, they destroyed the uh, base force, um, but we did detect more than 5,000 Japanese troops, 38 guns, still this far north on the Malayan Peninsula, and because this guy was on the rail line, they couldn't rail south. I don't know if they were trying to rail south, but if they were, um, we were interdicting that, so um, at least for a day anyway. It only lasted a day. Meanwhile, we're continuing the bombardment attacks at Mersing. I don't know why. Yeah, probably, or no, the Japanese are bombarding at Mersing. So you can see they're trying to slow us down by hitting us with artillery, but they're actually losing more casualties to counter battery fire than they're inflicting on us. So, uh, there's that. Allied bombardment attack at Kaigan, uh, here on the uh, island of Mindanao. Um, we've got pretty equal forces, I think, between us and them. We've got the advantage of fortifications, they've got the advantage of better troops. I don't know who would win in a, in a, if he shock attacked or attacked right now. Probably the Japanese, in all honesty. But uh, nonetheless, uh, our attack did some damage, disabled some troops, probably burned a fair bit of supply, which we want to try to avoid doing. And that's going to do it for this turn. We can see fortifications uh, being built at Perth and uh, other locations. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to move us into the reinforcement phase uh, and the production phase which is all kind of just blasted through, and it's going to kick us out to the main menu of the game. So it was a pretty quick turn result, less than 10 minutes, um, and that was with me going relatively slow. Probably could have gone through it more quickly. Uh, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'm going to go in and, and jump in and do my turn, and then I'll kind of summarize things for you uh, once I'm uh, done doing that. All right, everybody, we're back, and uh, we're looking at the Australian coast at the moment. We still have the Kidubutai in sight. Uh, she is still moving west, probably one turn away, I would guess, from Sydney. So Sydney or Newcastle look like they're the target. I mean, they could veer north to Brisbane, uh, but every indication is that he's moving directly west, which would indicate Sydney or Newcastle as the target. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move... I don't think there's any realistic chance that any of these guys can withstand anything from the Japanese carrier force. So we're actually going to move all our aircraft out as well. I forgot to do that before I started recording. So we'll do that on the stream here. Uh, we've already kind of vacated Sydney of pretty much everything valuable. And we're going to continue that, uh, that trend here as we move out the aircraft that are currently assigned to the port. Uh, we're going to move them west to Melbourne. The Japanese can't strike Melbourne and Sydney on the same day. They're too far apart. At least that's my assumption. 
And then uh, after they strike Sydney, I mean, we could move them further inland too, but um, this seems sufficient. It's close enough that they can fly so they don't have to all box up all the aircraft and all that jazz uh, if we were to like strategically transfer them via railway. Um, so with that being said, Sydney is empty of aircraft. She does have some ground units. Um, I guess they might end up taking some casualties. I should really have these guys in combat anyway. But they also might shoot up some flak at the enemy. So I think I'm willing to kind of bear that risk because these guys do have some anti-aircraft guns uh, in these units that can shoot back at the enemy aircraft if they uh, they try and shoot down here or try and uh, try and attack us here. We've got Bren anti-aircraft machine guns, uh, etc. So uh, anything we lose there, whatever, we'll, uh, we should recoup it. Uh, relatively quickly. Uh, we do have a lot of supply there, some of which could be destroyed. Uh, we do have a fair bit of fuel. Uh, the port is more or less empty. The only things left in the port are these sort of local mine sweepers, which are there to kind of operate the port. If we were to lose them, I don't think that's worth very much. It's like one victory point, right? Uh, yeah, so like one victory point. We can build more of those we'll, or get more of those. So no real worry there. Uh, Kanbara, what do you have? 18 whirlways? Probably should move you guys away too. I don't want any of my warways getting uh, delusions of grandeur, thinking they'll get anything but shot down if they move on, on the Kidubutai. Meanwhile, Newcastle's empty. Brisbane has a little bit of value if he was to swing north and go for Brisbane. Um, not in terms of ready ships, but we have a couple of ships there that are under repair that we can't really do anything about for a few turns. So the Charovol or uh, Chevreu. Uh, the minesweeper that was sort of the hero, 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 words, pronunciations, my strong suit, um, who was uh, the hero of a, the naval battle of Comac, uh, inflicting some casualties on the Japanese landing force there. She's under repair, will be under repair for four more days. The American submarine Sea Dragon's probably the most valuable ship there, uh, under repair for 88 more days. And then we've got uh, a cargo ship, the Megs and the Maoban, both at Brisbane if you were to swing north. Meanwhile, we're racing these tankers here out of the way. They've got a lot of fuel, and they're very valuable ships, so we're moving them north to Townsville. Uh, I think they'll get away in time. Uh, we also have this heavy cruiser task force, uh, which is moving east toward Comac. Originally, I was going to move them toward uh, Lugan, or sorry, Tulagi, but uh, we did move some recon aircraft into uh, Nomaya, and those aircraft are indicating that there are enemy task forces here. These look like Troop transports, perhaps moving into Comac, light troop transports, fast transports. And then another force here of gunboats. So if we can surprise a Japanese force here and destroy them, uh, all the better because then we've still got plenty of room to race northwest and away from the carriers. Uh, with that being said, we are moving them north before we move them east to ensure we avoid the Kidubutai. Um, additionally, I don't really have a lot else to say. Uh, New Zealand has a bunch of ships there, uh, some under repair, some not. Um, pretty valuable target there. These uh, troop transports are moving to uh, the United States. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of value, but they're way south here. They should be safe from anything over in that direction. Uh, the uh, Queen Mary, was it? Is somewhere here. Is this her? Queen Elizabeth, sorry. And she's racing west at full speed. We're going to slow her down to mission speed. She took a lot of system damage and some engine damage last turn. Uh, running at flank speed, and uh, she can still make 29 knots, so she's far enough away at this point that she's safe. Um, we'll just keep going that direction until the Japanese uh, decide to go another direction. Meanwhile, we are diverting some of our tankers here. The uh, Light Task Force 183 with 21,000 fuel headed toward uh, the eastern coast of Australia is now headed toward Perth, the same as this uh, task force carrying oil. It's heading to Melbourne, but we're going to take the long way the long way around, um, mainly because uh, if I do send them this way toward the Torres Strait, there's no guarantee that he won't move the Kidubutai up along the eastern Australian coast, hitting bases all along the way. He could then move them through the Torres Strait and then into the Dutch East Indies. That seems highly unlikely, but it is in theory uh, possible. Meanwhile, we've got a small light cruiser task force, the Dragon and the Enterprise. Both of these ships here are headed east uh, into harm's way. Uh, potentially for some carrier rating, or not carrier rating, but potentially for some rating here of Japanese shipping uh, between um, truck and uh, Tulagi. I'm assuming there's a logistical line here 
and he hasn't taken any of these bases, so we might be able to sneak a light cruiser task force into the eastern coast of New Guinea and then sprint it out and then back and forth and kind of interdict Japanese shipping along those lines. So we do have a couple of light cruisers that are headed that away. Uh, we also appear to have gotten the other uh, task force out of Palembang, another 17,000 fuel. They're headed for Perth. There are Japanese submarines in the area, so it is possible that they get intercepted. Um, there's three tankers over here as well. Um, these guys are going to Palembang, really? There's not a whole lot of value in doing that. How about we stop that? I was going to send them there to try and transport supplies to Singapore, but I don't think that's necessary. Certainly don't think it's worth it. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to pull my torpedo bombers, the Wildebeests, out of Johar Baru, because with all these fighter sweeps and bombing raids, uh, eventually he's going to go max effort and he's going to really hit the base hard. And with us pulling out of Mersing, there's really no reason to dissuade him from... Uh, moving ships in and bringing tra you know, uh, troop transports on the Malay Peninsula. The purpose of these torpedo bombers has largely been served. So I think what we'll do here is we'll... These guys have a range of, what, 12? I don't know if there's any feasible way to get them back to Australia, but it would be nice if we could. Um... Get them back to Palembang. That's is that the furthest south we can go? Kuching, where's that? Where's Kuching? Is it like Kuching over here somewhere? Where the hell is Kuching? I know that base. Twelve. Where, where is a, actually. Oh, it's over here, over here to these. There's no reason to go that way. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a look at our torpedo bombers. We've got 20 of them still based in Johar Baru. But we're gonna pull these guys back to Palembang. From Palembang, we're gonna pull them back to, eventually, to Australia. There's just no value in keeping them based forward where they're going to get hit by enemy air raids. So we'll do that. We'll keep the other aircraft there as a lure for Japanese bombers so they don't just switch on Singapore. We've got no indication that they're going to make a move for Singapore yet. Um, was there one more bomber still at Singapore? Yeah, there's still one more B-17. All right, so we're going to move this guy to Rangoon, which I think his force is already there. Okay, so we've now pulled the B-17s out of Singapore as well. Uh, so we've got 12 B-17s north in Rangoon, uh, and then we've got um, the torpedo bombers out of there as well. Let's do a city attack. We're going to bomb Bangkok. We're going to bomb the refinery. Okay. So we're going to bomb the refinery. We're going to set all level bombers at this base. 10,000 feet. All of these guys, all 12 B-17s are going to go again. It's uh, Bangkok. So maybe it'll lure some of his fighters further north and away from Singapore to give us a little bit of an advantage. Uh, maybe not. Um, the rest of these guys are going to stay put for the time being. All of these are set to train, so we're trying to get them back up to strength, but we don't have enough repairmen there to do the job. Uh, the Vildebeest should be set to training zero. Good. All right, so they're stood down. Do we have any Vildebeest replacements? Doesn't look like it. The Hermes is pulled back to Sorbaya. I think they've replenished their, uh, they have, they've replenished their fuel. 
So we've got this task force back here. Mm. Could switch them over to Albacores. Carrier capable, not carrier trained. We've got good range too. Yeah, we'll leave them on the carrier for now. Um, meanwhile, I don't have a lot else to talk about on this turn. He hasn't moved into Batan yet. We did unload some supplies in Batan. We're still at 54,000 supplies, which is our max amount that we can fit here before spoilage. It's actually 53,000. We've got another 600 supplies on the way up on this uh, patrol craft, the Zeman, uh, which is on its way. Not Once it gets to around here, we'll probably try and flank speed them in. Uh, but that, he, we haven't, it's January 14th, Batan is cut off, and he's not doing anything to reduce our um, our situation there. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we have some interesting indications coming out of Clark Field. So I'm actually going to set all recons to this. Um, and what I'm noticing here at Clark Field is that the enemy appears to be weakening himself. He's down to 43,000 troops and 13 units. I believe it was at like 60,000 last turn, unless I'm making this up in my head. But it looks like he's weakening himself there. I don't know if he, I mean, he's maybe bringing in new troops into Vegan, but I'm not quite sure what he's doing. Uh, it's not weak enough, I don't think, for me to attack him. But if he doesn't move on Batan, like if he's just trying to starve me out, well, one so far, okay, dude, good luck with that because we're not even, we're not even trying to, uh, you know, we're not even digging into our supplies yet. And uh, the other thing is, like, these guys, a lot of these units, they've got a, they've got some disruption, but. If you just let us sit back and rest, they're going to recover, man. They're going to recover that disruption. They're going to get better. They're going to have more, more assault strength. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe he'll try and come after us in a week or two. I, I don't know. Um, but it'd be interesting if he's trying to move troops away. Uh, I'm moving all my recon over Clark Field to see what he has there. 257 guns and 43,000 troops is not something to scoff at. He also has troops here adjacent in Manila. It could be It could be bait. Uh, as well. Like, maybe he's trying to lure us out. Maybe some of those troops went south to Mindanao. Maybe that's some of the 11,000 troops he has down here. He's got a couple of infantry regiments down here. Um, so that's certainly possible. I'm going to stop the bombardment attacks. I don't really want to do that anymore. I don't want to waste more supply. Uh, so we'll kind of let him come to us at Kagan. Um, so we'll do that. Um... I also did switch over the paratrooper regiment in San Diego to join the Pacific Fleet. So we now have the 2nd United States Marine Corps paratroop unit, the 2nd Marine Regiment, and the 2nd USMC Tank Battalion. Uh, all are currently... Um, by the way, what's the TOE on this? Wow, he's way under strength. Two days, okay. Um, all currently in the Pacific Fleet, so those are three good combat units we could divert to another base to help defend in the in the South Pacific, which we intend to once we have some more transports there. Um, speaking of transports, still unloading supplies and, and whatnot at um, at Pago Pago. Um, yeah, uh, these guys are going to Pearl with their transports. The uh, cargo ships appear to have made it out of Suva. I don't really have a lot to say. Like this is kind of a kind of an in-between turn. We've got these this cruiser task force moving east. We've got his carriers moving west, and then we've just got a lot of logistical things that are that are in play in motion at the moment. Um, in China, we can kind of see the troops at Lo Yang uh, are in the process of falling back west. Some of them have actually already made it there. The others will arrive this turn. They're all about like. Six to six to six or less miles away from the adjacent hex, and again, some of them uh, have already arrived. Uh, so that's that's good news. Um, yeah. So once these guys arrive, then I think what we'll do all arrive here to the west of Lo Yang. I think what we'll do is we'll withdraw north uh, a couple of hexes. If we go with roadways, oh. Maybe what we do is we withdraw to here because it won't, he can't 
easily cross the jungle or flank us here. So we'll move back here so he can't easily flank us. And then we'll have three, two hexes of good uh, level two or three defensive terrain before we fall back to Cyan. So that's a good uh, direction, I think. Meanwhile, we need to be mindful of what we're doing here at Nanyang. We've got another large force of about uh, 2,000 assault value here. And um, they're gonna get a, they're gonna be in a bit of a salient as we fall back. I don't think there's any roadways that can easily flank them. There's not, um, but we just need to be mindful of that because uh, while it would make sense to fall back on Cyan to form like a strong force that can resist his eventual offensive with nearly equal victory value based on or assault value based on what we've seen him have to bear thus far. Uh, it might actually be more prudent to withdraw an and king, so we've got a blocking force should the Japanese try and move up this valley uh, and a flanking maneuver on Chongqing, which is the Chinese capital and, and the center of so much of its uh, supply production. Um, so we just need to, we need to think through that. Uh, meanwhile, in southern China, we've got one infantry corps that's making a sprint for Puchang, which could open up some supplies to Wang Kao, which is starting to run low on supplies. Um, surprisingly enough, they actually have a pretty good amount of supply compared to some of the other Chinese cities. I think they might actually make some of their own. They do. They have resources. Um, they still have a little bit of fuel for production, too. Uh, meanwhile, not a lot else going on in China. Not a lot else going on the rest of the... Uh, the rest of the map. So, rather than boring you guys, I will uh, I will not dally on logistics. If we do go ahead and we take a look at losses last turn, uh, we did claim five Sonya shot down. Those were the dive bombers that we hit unescorted over uh, Lo Yang. Uh, Fourteen Japanese aircraft lost today to one Allied aircraft. Five Sonyas, two Babs, a lot of singles uh, is what the claim is. Uh, actually, I think do we have go to the aces here. Looks like we have our fifth ace. I'm trying to remember who all was here, but I think we had four aces before. We now have our fifth ace, our second ace in the Flying Tigers. Uh, is it Mott? Where is this guy? Where's your base? I, I don't even know. Like, where? Yeah. This is the base in China. So um, this squadron now has its first ace, uh, it's C. Mott, second lieutenant, uh, a good good turn there. He must have been one of the guys up and intercepting the Sonyas. Uh, with that being said, I am going to go ahead and rest these guys. Their fatigue is up to 21, and I... Why are there only... Th none of these guys are ready. Oh, they've been flying supplies. Why would you be flying supplies into Chen Gao? We lost Chen Gao. You guys stand down. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to cause these uh, these flying tigers to stand down as well. Just because the fatigue level at 21 is a little bit high up here in Cyan. I think we've got enough aviation support. We have no aviation support in Cyan? Shit. Uh, crap. Move these guys to Lang Cow. I think anyway. Oh shit, there's a garrison requirement there. Goddamn garrison requirements. Um God damn it. Construction regiments, but we need a base force. All right, we can move this guy from Yan'an to Cyan to get them some... I thought they had some support there, but apparently not. Also, as he keeps withdrawing in this direction, we're going to have some other Chinese uh, aircraft here. What are these guys targeting? Low Yang, eh? Maybe make a low altitude sprint in there and try and bomb Lo Yang with some of these aircraft. Um, in addition to that, we had another AVG group somewhere. 
At least the thing with Cyan is it's on a rail line to nowhere, so they can't really go anywhere. Um, do we have guys at Nanying? We, we have 46 aviation support in Nanying. Those need to fall back. There's no reason for them to be there. They need to go to Cyan. All right. Okay, so, and where's the other grouping of the second AVG? All right, so those guys will merge. The other guys are gonna stand down. Um, and <laughs> probably in a week, we'll have some aviation support up there. But I think that's going to do it for this turn, guys. Uh, some interesting stuff that's coming up, but not a lot going on at this moment. Some curious stuff, though. He hasn't moved on Batan, as far as we've seen. His troop numbers have declined to Clarkfield. Uh, our cruisers in off the Australian coast are going to be making a dash. The Japanese are making a move as well in that same vicinity. And... Um, we lost a unit here along the railway uh, to the north of Telmu, but we did, I think, I'm hoping, I mean, there were 11,000 Japanese troops that were in that hex that at least had to del delay a day from their march down the Malay Peninsula. So that's, the hope is they delayed them a little bit. Um, meanwhile, the where is your... Uh... 62 squadron here at Meaden. Yeah, so we also pulled these bombers out of Johabaru last turn. They're going to pull back to Rang... Oh, they can't reach Rangoon yet. All right, well, they're going to go to uh, Tavoy then, which is low on supply. Um, but I guess if they're going to go there, they're going to go for a city attack against Bangkok. I really want to destroy that refinery. Doesn't I mean like it might not be the most efficient use of our uh, of our power, but I'd like to do it. Um, okay, so we'll pull that out. Yeah, so I think that's going to do it for this turn. Uh, we'll go ahead and sign off, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side, and we'll see what happens uh, in this next turn uh, coming up here, January fourteenth, nineteen forty-two. Ship availability. What are where are we at right now? Our uh, next ships, I think we have some stuff coming up very soon. Yeah, so one day we've got a bunch of cargo ships, submarines, a whole bunch of submarines arriving in the Dutch East Indies. Dutch submarines too, the O24, 23, 21, those are going to be good. Um, destroyers, the Royal Sovereign arrives tomorrow. The Royal Sovereign and the Dors Dorsetshire both arrive. So a new heavy cruiser and a new battleship arriving in theater tomorrow. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, we get the Indomitable in three days. The Truant in three days. Uh, the New Mexico and the uh, Mississippi just outside of a, a week away. More subs, cruisers. Yeah, so some interesting ships coming online in the next few days. But until then, guys, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you, little blah, thank you much for watching. This is the Historical Gamer signing off. Should I? No, I should not do that more often. All right, guys, see ya.